The following is a CSPN Media podcast presentation. Hello, and welcome to Cast of Strong Style. I'm your host, Don DeLaRente, and I'm joined by my co-host, Anwar Starwin. What's going on, Anwar? Hello, Don. Hello, audience out there that is hearing me now. Glad you could join me once again, man. We got a lot to talk about on this week's show. We got to review the 47th anniversary show and the first round of the New Japan Cup. All right. All right, so we're going to get right into it. As we had the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title match between Shingo and Bushi. They faced off against Rapungi 3K. Bushi hits a suicide dive. Show German Shingo and Bushi miss show. We get a pumping bomber by Shingo. But Rebellion connects. But Yo makes the save. Bushi goes to the ropes. He misses the MX. Yo tags in. And then the 3K connects, and we have new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions as Sho and Yo get their titles back. It took them about a year to get back to that point, because mm-hmm. if they would have lost some more time, I don't know what they could have done at that point. So they were kind of in a situation where they had to win. <laughs> It literally it benefits them and also frees up like Shingo to like get prepped and ready, heated up for um best of super juniors in a couple months. So it's it's a win win situation, even though I could have would have been fine with seeing the L I G juniors hold that title for for a little bit longer. But I get it because you could always put Bushi in situations where it's him, Evil and Sonata as a trio. Like wrestling for never a six man title because they they're probably all the best six man tag team champions as far as in the history of that title. So it it, it it works out in a lot of different ways. And with this match, like that flash finish was pretty cool. And everybody shows love to show, and he is excellent. I love show. I, I have expectations for him in the future as like a power junior singles, but. Give credit where credit was due. Yo was the MVP of that match to me. He did a lot, and I think more people need to give some, put some respect on my man Yo's name. So props to him, and I hope he has a really great best of Super Juniors as well because I want him to get more spotlight as well. I don't want him to have to always be like the one B to shows one A. Well, I'm going to heap uh, some more praise on show. I need the best of the Super Juniors final to be Shingo versus show. Oh, hell yeah. That's oh, all. Um, that's all. Uh, they need to be on opposite sides of the bracket so they can meet up in the finals. Because. Um, what what happens if Hiromu was in there? I think Hiromu versus Shingo is a better sync finals. But they both Lij. I don't know if they would if they would go that route. I mean, uh, uh, in tournaments they don't care. In tournaments they don't care. Whoever faces whoever. Well, that's got to be like a semifinal match or something. It's got to be like a high stakes match in that tournament. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a block decider. Yeah, those two boys that's, are. Whew. Yeah, that will be a that will be a block decider type of match. And I guess you could have um, Ishimori on the oven in a block decider match. So you can set up a lot of different type of matches too, for real. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be fun if uh, everybody stays healthy and they and they get there, you know, with full strength, man, with the full division intact. It's definitely gonna be a lot of cool matchups. I definitely liked Best of Super Juniors last year for the fact of it didn't have the bullshit finishes that the G one like G one did last year. The G one had awesome like top level matches, but the bullshit with Bullet Club and the Fire Squad, man, that shit was awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't really a fan of that. You were definitely happy once they got uh, eliminated and weren't a part of the, 
you know, proceedings as far as being threats to go to the finals. But you were right. I did go back. I was like at the um Wizards game mm-hmm. and they were just beating the hell out of the um Kings. So I was watching the game, but then I went back and revisited like um Abushi versus Tomatong from G one last year. And I was like, Yeah, you were right. That's pretty good. I was like <laughs> That's, that that was probably Thomas' best like singles match I've seen. Yeah, yeah, they got so, down. So yeah, yeah, I was like, Bushi's the man to pull that out of him. So keeping in the junior heavyweight discussion, we had the junior heavyweight title match between Taiji Ishimori and the legend Jushin Thunder Liger. Ishimori hits a huge lariat for a two count. Liger gets the crucifix pin, and he almost pins Ishimori. The Luthes pressed by Lago follows for another two count. Ishimori cuts him off, then transitions into the LaBelle lock. Lago rolls, but he can't reach the ropes and he has to tap out. And Ta- uh, Taiji Ishimori retains the IWGP junior heavyweight title. Man, it's crazy that Lago's 54 years old and pulled off that shit, man. <laughs> It was an awesome match. It was consistent through to to the end, and the finish was the proper one. Man, it's like Liger's Liger's amazing. Liger's been a star, like a, a consistent part of my life since I was a child. So that was that was a great, great swan song in a way. So yeah, yeah. Ishimori, Ishimori is the man, dude. I mean, he is. He's, he, when you when he put him in the spots to step up, he fucking delivers great matches, man. <laughs> So did. getting getting him getting him as part of division and part of New Japan was a great like move. So props to Mister Bone Soldier. Yeah, for sure. Keep 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 keep, keep getting the like division reborn because we need this division to reborn for sure. <laughs> Lost so much talent after the match. Ishimori asks for a challenge. Dragon Lee accepts, and this is more than likely going to be taking place at the G1 Supercard of Honor in Madison Square Garden. So, Anwar, maybe here's one more match you're going to get to see in person. I was so, so friggin' hyped after learning that. I was like, this is going to be fucking awesome. And then the next day, Bandito got added to it, and I was like, God damn it, can't we just get a singles match? <laughs> but, then, but then I was talked back down like, Okay, this shit's gonna be crazy. So you're getting these three awesome junior heavyweights, and it's like, yeah, that's gonna be probably one of the highlights of like the the night for sure. I have expectations for that match. Please give them at least fifteen to twenty minutes. Please, wrestling guys, give them fifteen to twenty minutes. But yeah, like the little interaction between Lee and Ishimori after the match, and how like Ishimori started speaking in in Mexican. <laughs> It was funny. So yeah, that was that was that that was an awesome match, man. Like they did the damn thing. So awesome title defense by like Ishimori versus the Goat Liger. But yeah, like once once um once like Lee said that stuff about he ain't representing ROH but representing CMLL, that kind of was like hmm. And then the next day, okay. That opened up a land for Bandito to come in, so it wasn't that surprising if you really were paying attention. Mm-hmm. Next matchup, the Dream Team, Tanahashi and Okada, they tag team along with Goto to go against Naito, Evil, and Sonata. Goto hits his Ichigoroshi on Naito, but Sonata cuts him off with the skull in. Sonata swings him around, but Goto counters out and he cradles him with the wind with the Goto Clutch. That caught me by so caught me by surprise. Because of anybody in this match, you would have thought it would have been Goto to eat the pinfall. Not no fucking Sonata. But once they did that, it's like, okay, what's going on here? So it was it was a good like it was a good six man, so. And it also puts some heat on, like, Goto going into the tournament. So, that was pretty dope. In our main event of the anniversary show, 
It was the IWGP champion versus the never open weight champion in a non-title match as Jay White faced off against Will Ospreay. Jay White looks for the Blade Runner, but it's counted and Ospreay hits a sit-out powerbomb for a near fall. Ospreay goes up top and the imploding 450 connects for a two count as Jay White makes the ropes. Ospreay looks for the Stormbreaker, but it's counted. Osprey lands a series of kicks. Jay White counters an os cutter into the Blade Runner. Then he gives Will Osprey another Blade Runner, and Jay White is victorious. So now Jay and Will are one one. Like it, it just Jay really showed up his showed off his intelligence with the match with his counters and. Just suggesting the situations that will put him in that were not necessarily always beneficial for him. This match was just like a, a, a like a, a coming of age or like this is this is a guy to watch in the form of Osprey because Osprey really really fucking shined in this match. So yeah, people got complaints about his um, theatrical like selling or whatnot, but I mean this is he does that from sometimes because I believe he had like a theater background growing up. So it's not that surprising you would put that type of emphasis within this match. I mean, but yeah, Osprey is awesome. And what they did at, for him at the end, even after a loss with the film following them going to like the back that that was interesting as well. Like, so man, these, these, these two young dudes are gonna like these, this is the future of the company right here. Along with, Young lines, so yeah, yeah. This, this was this was awesome. I have to rewatch like the ROH match because I still think I like that match one one match that match more. But I don't know, like. So yeah, th- this is an awesome main event. I got no complaints about it. How did you feel, Jay White came across main event champion? Even though this wasn't a quote unquote title defense. But he was the main event. He is carrying the big belt. Do you feel like he put on a champion quality performance? Um, yeah, he he did a really good job. Like, I think, I think getting compared to some of the greatest wrestlers ever all time who are in their prime or even past their prime, it's kind of a tough thing for a guy who's just kind of starting his career. So. He's he the what he is right now. We have no idea what he'll be in a year or or two years. So I get some of the frustration of people who've been spoiled with like these great wrestlers putting on these classic type of matchups. But he's doing a really good job. He's not out there stinking it up. It's just he, he's not he's not the the typical like. New Japan main event like wrestler right now, so I mean, people got to adjust, I guess. I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I do think some of this is that, like, I think some of this this, this blowback is that it's some of these fans are like kind of frustrated with Kenny not being there, and you comparing a guy to Kenny Omega, who's one of the great. Regardless how you feel about Omega outside of the ring. Inside the ring, he's one of the best wrestlers in the world right now and one of the best, like, foreigners to come to Japan ever. So that's kind of hard to come after a guy like that. So, and also keep in mind, like I said, Kenny's like a decade older than, like, Jay. So it's that's a really hard comparison. So I, I, I would like people to maybe just chill out on that if they were, if they're like unintentionally doing that, but I get it, but still let, let Jay grow and be what he can be eventually. All right. So that was the anniversary show. A lot of fun. Uh, Juice and Thunder. Did you peep like, did you peep like how all the people at the end of the match came out and Mm -hmm. they were like, they were like, Everybody pointing to themselves like, this is me. I am want to be me, and it's going to be me that win New Japan Cup. Mm-hmm. Right. It was pretty cool. It was pretty freaking cool. And and then eventually, one of like young lady I follow, like, on Twitter, I think it's Aram, Aram, and she's like, oh, wow, they look like the Avengers. 
<laughs> and I guess and, and then like and then Tyler like saw it and then he was like I'm t-, he took the took like the picture of all of them staring at Jay White. It it was like I'm Tony Stark, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and then somebody said Bushi is fucking um Scarlet Witch. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, this was a really good show. I enjoyed it. Even the undercard was really good. I know we didn't talk about it, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was it was a, a well done card to me. I really liked the main event, Jay White. To me, you know. It's not easy being a champion for the first time. So, you know, every match that he has in this role, I expect him to get better and better. And Will Ospreay mm-hmm. is going to have a really big 2019. Yep. So. Just please don't do crazy stuff and hurt yourself, Will. <laughs> right. Right. That's going to go for somebody else here later on when we get to these oh. reviews. But before Uh-oh. we get into the reviews, just remind everybody that this is Cast a Strong Style. You can find Cast a Strong Style on the web at www.cspn.us. We can also be found on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitch Radio, Google Play, Spotify, and also YouTube. So we're going to talk about the New Japan Cup, the first round. So we're going to start with the very first day. We're going to have four matches on each day to cover, so we're going to try to run through these at a kind of swift pace. Yoshihashi, he faces off against Nakanishi. Yoshihashi lands a running knee strike. It gets a two count. He puts Nakanishi into the butterfly lock, and Nakanishi has to tap. So, no surprise there. Yoshihashi taking care of business, getting into the next round. I, Nakanishi went out all out in that match, man. He oh, had yeah. me scared. He had me scared of some that 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 spot to the outside. I was like, oh no. He was doing high flying moves and moves on I the was outside. Scared for him. I was like, no, don't hurt yourself. If he's gonna do it, we in one last New Japan Cup. He definitely let it all hang out. He definitely did. And I was like, at the end of the match, yeah, Yoshihashi won, but were you really the better person in that match? I don't know. <laughs> My man, Taichi, he faced off against Hamna. Hamna counters the axe bomb into a cradle for a two count. We get a dragon sleeper by Taichi, but Hamna makes the ropes. Taichi hits the backdrop driver, and he covers for a two count. Then Taichi puts on the dragon sleeper, and Hamna has to tap out because we don't want to do more damage to his neck. Hamna did look better in this match. But it's like I wasn't feeling tight tai, tai Chi in it, so it kinda was like mm. mm kinda felt like one of those matches where it's like Tai Chi is only gonna be as good as he wants to be and this wasn't the night where he's gonna be good, so mm. it wasn't for me. Our next match on the first night of the New Japan Cup, Juice Robinson. He faced off against Chase Owens. Juice lays in chops, but Owens rolls him up with the ropes, but the ref sees it. Owens argues with the ref, and he cradles Juice with the ropes again. The ref breaks it up, and Juice goes for Pulp Fiction, but it's countered. Owens hits the Jewel Heist for a two count. Owens follows with the Package Power Driver, and Chase Owens gets the upset victory over Juice Robinson. Yeah, that shocked the hell out of me. That makes two but of us. That shocked the hell out of me. That messed up my brackets for like the <laughs> tournament. Like literally, I had Juice going far in the tournament. So it was, it, but they've been showing lately that they're going to put more emphasis in building up Chase. So actually, this is good for Chase's career. And now that puts him in the line to get a U.S. championship shot. Maybe it's probably be at one of these road shows in New Japan, or maybe it'll be at a pay-per-view in a, like in the, in the spring or summer. So, I mean, good for Chase. And, hey, man, Juice, she's still the U.S. champion. But, yeah, that's, that's a tough, tough break. The match is really good, though. In our main event of night one of the New Japan Cup, Yuji Nagata, he faced off against Ishii. Not, uh, Nagata drops the knee pad, but runs into a lariat. Nagata kicks out at one. We get an enziguri by Ishii, followed by the sliding D, and that gets a two count. 
the high angle brain buster follows, and Ishii gets the pin on Yuji Nagata. Man, this was an awesome way to open, like, like a main event open, like, for the cup. Like, I knew they wouldn't disappoint. I've been waiting for this match since, like, New Year's Day. So, yeah, man, they killed it. It was awesome. The God is a badass motherfucker for a 50-year-old. And Ishii, I'm going to just enjoy how much longer he can go because the way he go, I don't know. He's 43, so we'll see. But another awesome match between them two. And, yep, not not surprising the least because they're great wrestlers. I had a 12-year-old kid enamored by this match. What? Yeah, he was... He was waiting to play his uh his play PS4, but I had hijacked the TV before he could get to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he came in in the near the end of the uh, Juice Robinson Chase Owens match, and I was like, well, "I got one more match to go. Let me watch this one." And he was mm-hmm. captivated, like, "Oh wow, wow, <laughs> that's, that's what's up." Yeah, so I did my do. Due diligence for the look, youth. Probably going to be looking up matches for them two guys at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to move on to day two. As we have Toa Hanare, he faced off against Lance Archer. We get a pounce by Lance Archer, and the Uranaki gets a two count. The choke slam connects, but Hanare kicks out. They trade strikes, and we get a headbutt by Hanare, but Lance Archer kills him with the Lariat. Lance Archer goes for blackout. He's successful, and Hanare gets pinned, and Lance Archer moves on to the next round. I was really hoping that Hanare would pull it out, but I mean, I get it because KES don't really be around that much, and it would mean more to put more juice in them. So good, good for Aunt Lance getting the win. All right. Yeah, Lance Archer can't throw his water anymore. So the crowd's not as afraid of him as they usually are. But uh, he wrestled pretty good. It's my first time seeing him wrestle in quite a while. So, you know, he was fresh to my eyes. So I enjoyed that match. I would like to see him in in Harry versus, like, um, Evil and Sonata again. Because they, they had a really awesome match at the like, Dome, I think, a couple years ago. Yep, sure did. The newest member of Chaos, Mikey Nichols, faced off against Heleku, the little big brother of the Bullet Club. They trade strikes. Mikey Nichols connects with the Death Valley Driver and a sliding clothesline for a two count. The Blue Thunder Bomb finishes off Heleku and Mikey Nichols advances to the next round. Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly thought Hilaleo was going to um, actually win because he's like more of a fixture in New Japan. But I guess it makes sense you're introducing a new person, technically new to the company. So I get why he lost. So, I mean, Chaos got a lot, little hot streak going right now. So, yeah. Our next match, we have Bad Luck Fale versus Will Ospreay. Will Osprey hits the Robinson special, but the Oz cutter is blocked. We get a spear by Fale and the grenade, but Osprey kicks out. Osprey counters the bad luck fall into a Hurricane Rana into a cradle, and Will Osprey gets a flash victory over bad luck Fale. Man, like, Fale really brings it against some of the, like, the chaos guys always get like the top end chaos people usually draw the best matches out of Fale. And now Osprey is in that company, in my opinion, because I already just like it was, it was just the final stretch was pretty dope. So Osprey, like beating these heavyweights, man, beating these heavyweights, but yet still being called a junior heavyweight. What the fuck? Whatever. Blowing up in the world, man. He's taking the uh, never open championship to places it's never been. For me, I think they doing that stuff because they might sneak him in best of super juniors. I don't know, man. We'll <laughs> see. You keep calling him a junior, so um, he's re- going to see what they they trying to be slick. I yeah, don't know. yeah, he's we'll, a 
he's a very he's one of those transitional players. He can go, you know, either direction they need him to. He's like he's like Hayabusa was back in the day who could go from being a junior heavyweight or heavyweight and Kota Ibushi because he would be junior heavyweight but be in like heavyweight tournaments and stuff. So he's in that spot right now that that other people have been. I think um Shingo was probably also in that that class because I think I remember Shingo even referring to himself as an open weight. So he's like I will wrestle juniors or heavyweights. I mean. I believe he wrestled like Shingo wrestled like a couple months ago, um, Shota, and that was a pretty good match. So yeah. Our main event for night two, we have Okada versus Michael Elgin. Elgin counters a rainmaker into a power bomb for a great near fall. We had a cross face by Elgin, but Okada rolls and he makes it to the ropes. Elgin hits the buckle bomb. But Okada counters back out, and they trade counters. We get a back fist by Elgin, and Okada is down. Okada counters a second back fist and hits a tombstone. That gets followed up by the Rainmaker, and Okada pins Michael Elgin and moves on to the next round. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. When, whenever, every, have you ever, when they did the rain, when he does the Rainmaker pose, have you ever stretched your arms out? I do it all the time. <laughs> because it's just fun, man. It's like, spe- it's like that's one of the fun things the rest is he does it just like. Right. You do that. It's also kind of like when evil be doing like everything is evil. And then <laughs> right. you just kind of just help yourself just say it too. Cause I, I, I'm, I, I'm going to be real with you. If I'm in that crowd and he does that shit, I'm going to say it loud. My, my, in unison. My, my favorite time to see the Rainmaker pose is after he's been battling, 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 and then out of nowhere he hits the million dollar drop kick and he gets up and he does it. Oh, that's my favorite. Oh, man, yeah. His drop kick is amazing. But as far as the quality of this match, people feel, we all feel a certain type of way about Elgin as a human being. Yeah. And that's one thing, but we can Put that temporary to the side for this discussion. Every time we see Elgin versus Okada, it is usually a great match. I've watched them wrestle over the last like three years, and they every match has been great to me to varying degrees. So you know what you're going to get out of this matchup. This was just another example of that. And for the fact that Elgin was out for that amount of time and to come back and put out that level of quality of match, bro, got to use him a little bit more. So, yeah, man, Elgin, El- Elgin Okada just, was an awesome match, and it was it's been like it, out of the like the first five nights I've watched like um, New Japan Cup is one of the best match of like the first five days, no doubt about. It. Oh, yeah, for sure. That was a great, great match. About 15 minutes in, you could see, like, oh, man, Michael Elgin's really going for it this time because he's never beaten Okada before. And so he had a whole bunch of counters for most of Okada's offense. So He broke out the cross face in this (laughs) match where he didn't really have that, Mm -hmm. like, attack in the previous two matches. Like, he's like, okay. We're going to do something different, and I'm going to attack your arm and, and weaken it and use the submission to put you out of commission. I was like, that's really smart. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good tactics in this match. And Okada, you know, he's got the uh, the trunks back on. He's back into Rainmaker mode and, you know, still showing and proving he's one of the best in the world. Yep. Day three, we have Tenzan going against Taguchi. We get an ankle lock by Taguchi. Tenzan fights, but Taguchi hangs on. Tenzan powers up again. He rolls and he finally escapes. Taguchi hits the drop kick. The Boombaye is cut off with a spin kick for a two count from Tenzan. Tenzan follows with the top rope headbutt, and that gets another two count. Taguchi counters a counters into a cradle, and then he picks up the win. So he kind of got a flash victory on Tenzan as well. Just a quick roll up. Tenzon showed good for this match. I, I wasn't mad with his efforts. Like, 
I was like, Tenzon versus Taguchi. I was like, I don't know about this match. But then I started watching. And I was like, yeah, I fuck with this match. <laughs> so um, it really surprised me with this quality in the fact another junior beating a heavyweight. That shocked me, too. I was like, okay, what's going on now? <laughs> Are y'all kind of like de-emphasizing that difference or something? Or are you are just doing it for this situation? But technically, like, honestly, Taguchi could be heavyweight. He just didn't want to be no heavyweight. He just chose to be a junior. And he has the size to be heavyweight. So, actually, it actually kind of makes sense that he would be able to beat Tenzon. But, yeah, this match was cool. And the, the, the pleasantries after the match was really nice, too. Next up, the ace, Tanahashi. He faced off against Shota Aminu. Aminu locks on Tanahashi's clover leaf, but Tanahashi makes the ropes. Aminu unloads with the vicious strikes, but Tanahashi cuts him off with a twist and shout. The clover leaf is countered into a cradle by Aminu for two count, and the crowd is going crazy. But then Tanahashi slaps on the clover leaf, and Shota Aminu eventually taps out, and the ace is successful and moves on to the next round. The dynamics within this match is, is really crazy. You got, like, the standard barrier of New Japan versus one of the new talents that people have high expectations for. Also, in the match where his fucking father was refereeing the match, that's that was kind of weird right there. That part was weird, but it was kind of cool, too. Mm-hmm. Um, If you mean, though, is like, Shota's pushing Tanahashi like this with... Limitate with the limitations like young lines have because they can't do certain moves. So, like the near fall that like Shota got on him was like it, it caused me to be like whoa 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 just like caused it caused me to have serious pause. I'm like oh he can actually win this match. But yeah, man, it, this match was dope. It was, this was one of my favorite matches of uh, like the opening round. And some point we're gonna see them run this back. I would not be against them as a tag team either, as like as Tanahashi like the accelerates from main event situations. What I liked about this match was this was the biggest match that Shota Aminu has ever had in his life, but you couldn't tell. He didn't appear nervous. He brought the fight to Tanahashi right from the opening bell. He didn't clean. He didn't break clean on the break. He lit Tanahashi up. Uh, Then Tanahashi, you know, backs him into the ropes. And when Tanahashi is, you know, going to give him a clean break, Aminu fired off on him and got to jump on him. He was just really aggressive. And uh, he put up a hell of an effort, man. So I really enjoyed this match, too. I thought it was a great story that they told. And it really did a lot to help a young lion get some experience and gain a lot of. fanfare and attention if you like some of the young lines i advise other viewers to go back and go through like new japan world and look for the lines gate like shows because that's where spotlights spotlights to like the young lines and whatnot it was like one one like match where it was i think it was yushida versus um yushida versus shota yumino and i think it was one where like um Yoshido versus um, Nagata. And it was another match where Yumino for Daisuke Sakamoto. And Sakamoto is one of the best wrestlers in, in like, Japan. So, yeah, go, you got to go beyond just, like, the, like, road shows and the big pay-per-views. Because even as a person, me, I watch a lot of that stuff. It's still stuff that I haven't seen in, like, Honestly, if you really want to go back, you could go back and look for um, you could go back and look for Shibata versus Riddle, I believe, from like 2017, like early part of the year, because that's like I think that was from Rev Pro, so you could be able to watch that. It's they got a lot of stuff over there that a lot of people haven't watched. They even had like the recent like like um show with like All Japan and whatnot. So go out and seek those matches out, and you could just get more good stuff content. Next pass on the card, Zack Sabre Jr. He faces off against Evil. 
Evil lands a clothesline and he takes Saber up top and he hits a big superplex. That gets a two count. Zack Saber Jr. counters everything as Evil and they work into more counters. And Evil hits a rolling lariat and he gets a two count of his own. They work into another series of counters. Zack Saber Jr. locks on a grounded octopus stretch and Evil has to tap out. And Zack Saber Jr. is going on to the next round. Yep, another good chapter between both wrestlers, and this puts Zach back in the pole position in their overall like feud because it's like, yeah, you got the uh, one up on me recently, Evil, but I still got your number, Punk. So, <laughs> yeah. The final sequence was great, man. Like all the counters and how Zach just caught him at the end, and Evil was right in the place in the ring; he couldn't do anything about it. Had to tap. Ain't no shame in tapping Evil. When you look at Evil, if you've never seen him wrestle before, you never would think that he had the command of the chain wrestling and counter wrestling that he does intricate enough to stay in a match with Zack Sabre Jr. when he starts going into that stuff. But, man, he was right there step for step with him in this match. I, I, like, like you said, they have awesome matches together when they do wrestle each other. I can't think of a bad one, and this is just another another one to add to that story. So, good stuff. One day they're gonna they are gonna be wrestling for some type of like single title, and it's gonna be ridiculous. Like, it definitely could be a future where like Zach or Evil is like never or like in a kind of champion, and they're wrestling for it. Definitely could see that someday. Our main event from night three, which was by far the most loaded card top to bottom. The Golden Star, Kota Ibushi, faced off against Naito. We get a last ride by Ibushi, and that gets a great near fall. Naito counters the Kamagoye into a Destino for a great near fall of his own. Ibushi counters Destino with a high kick, and the crowd is going crazy. The Boom Baye follows for a two count. Abushi hits the Abushi dryer, driller, excuse me, the Kamagoye, and Naito is done as Abushi gets the pin and he moves on to the next round. This was a bit more darker as far as like how they went after each other. Mm. It 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 was great. Another great match. They don't have nothing but great matches versus each other for the last couple years. Just great matches. So these guys are friends too. So I'm not surprised they're going to have this level of quality in match. So in the post match and how they had the camera spent, like, like, like spotlighting on the IC Championship. That what you say is foreshadowing, buddy. <laughs> So it, it might not happen at MSG. It might happen sometime during the spring, but that title match is gonna happen at some point. They wouldn't have did that for no damn reason. So that was the best. That was the best match of the open round for me. So I yep. want to see Kota Ibushi fulfill his two year contract that he signed. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna need him to take a little less of these uh, crazy bumps on on his neck. Uh, Man, those yeah. two like rude awakenings and then a tombstone on the apron yikes yeah he does that shit and I was like why he do this Bush? you don't gotta do this but that's what he does mm. man that tombstone on the apron was like whoa it mm-hmm. was like a thud <laughs> I actually rewound it was like I don't think I just saw that <laughs> then then it's funny you say that. Then a couple of like hours later, um, <laughs> um, Mustafa Ali does that particular move, that right. move on the apron on. I forgot who it was. Daniel like, Ryan did that. That that like four fifty, like, yeah. like they four fifty on the like apron. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so our final night of the first round, we see Yano face off against Davy Boy Smith Jr. Davy Boy Smith Jr. hits a reverse DDT for a two count. Rano, Yano, excuse me, then gets in a series of cradles for a two count. Yano then rolls Davy Boy Smith Jr. up for the win. <laughs> Goddamn Yano. 
He's always screwing over some of those 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 um Suzuki gun wrestlers with some some sneak shit. Sneaky sneaky. Yeah, sneaky style was in full effect. Uh Yano torments David Boy Smith Jr. He can never quite beat him up the way he wants to. He always seems to somehow slip out. And this was another <laughs> case. <laughs> wow. So Makabe, he faces off against Colt Cabana. Makabe looks for the spider German, but Cabana fights him off and Cabana misses a moonsault and C- Makabe hits his lariat and gets a two count. The Death Valley driver follows and Makabe misses the King Kong knee drop and that allows Colt Cabana to get the win with the Superman pin and Colt Cabana is moving on. It was a good match and that 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 pin boy, I was like, I didn't I was like just turn around for a second and I saw it. I was like, what? <laughs> he won. I was like, y'all y'all doing these flash pins to keep people on their toes, which is good. And it's like and I got why Makabe lost, because Makabe is the most like popular person in that company in Japan. So he has other things to do and other responsibilities. So maybe it was just him like getting out of the tournament early so he could do those or help handle those responsibilities. Cause he, he does a lot. I give him props because a lot of people a lot of people would have just like, you know what? I ain't doing this no more. I'm gonna just get this bread. But he 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 he, he supports both. So props to Makabe. Uncane Gorilla. <laughs> The King, Minoru Suzuki, he faced off against against Kojima. Suzuki blocks the lariat, and Kojima counters the gotch and follows with a lariat of his own. Kojima hits another lariat, and that gets a near fall. Suzuki then counters another lariat. He applies the sleeper hole. We get the gotch power driver, and Kojima is pinned, and Minoru Suzuki will be moving on. It was a good match. It was the right decision, and I mean, it was it was a good match, and I have no issues with like the end result. I like how Rocky Romero was given the backstory of both of these guys and their rivalry, and how long it's lasted, and through the different promotions that they've uh, you know encountered each other in. He gave a really good backstory to the match, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought that uh, lended a lot. Uh, on the American mm-hmm. commentary. Okay. Our final match of the first round, we see Sonata facing off against Goto. Goto lays in kicks, but Sonata counters the GTR and hits the anarchist suplex. We get a headbutt by Goto and they work into a series of counters and Sonata finally locks on the skull in. Sonata, he drops down, he then releases the skull in, he hits the ropes and he connects with the moonsault, and Sonata gets the win over Goto. You honestly didn't believe that all of LIJ was going to go all three in the goddamn <laughs> New Japan Cup now. <laughs> like, once Goto got that pinfall versus Sonata, that should have been a giant red hair for most people. It was for me. I can tell you that for a fact, sir. So I was like, how are we going to get to the point where Sonata beat Goto and damn, he got Goto. Missed the New Japan Cup, went out the first round. Shit. <laughs> I mean, this match itself, it started off really fucking slow and it turned off a lot of people, but it found its way like at the end. So it's like you can't really bury it as being a shitty match, but it, it was a good I liked it. But it definitely brought back in the picture, like, discussion of how do we feel about Sonata? And Yeah, I was just about to ask you, um, you know, how did you think his effort was in this match? Did he bring it? Was he loafing? Was he coasting? One of my good friends at Wolf Rattle pretty much just said it, said it that what, what some of us were thinking all along. We just got to accept for Sonata for what he is. He's a lazy motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, he's complacent. Like he he has great matches every once in a while, and he he's not going to give you what you expect out of him. And he's one of my favorite wrestlers in that company. He has a lot of potential, but he doesn't he don't bring it on a consistent basis. And for uh, for people 
that's going to be frustrating for people who see him have great single matches every once in a while versus Tana versus um, Okada and whatnot. And then he puts out this, even Ibushi in G1 last year. I, well, I like that match. Some people didn't, but it's like he's, he's, he's a frustrating wrestler. And then you start hearing, thinking about those rumors, and you be like, you know what? He definitely probably would take more money to do less. So I don't know. Like, I, I, I like Sonata. I hope he gets there someday. But he kind of feeling like, for me, like, like how how some of us felt about, like, Carlito. Carlito got this talent, but he bullshits. <laughs> that's basically what Sonata doing. Sonata be bullshitting, bro. I got love for him. That's my man, but he bullshit. So we'll talk about the second round matchups. We'll give you a preview of what's to come in the second round. As Taiichi, he's going to be facing off against Ishii. We have Yoshihashi going up against Chase Owens. Lance Archer will be facing Will Ospreay. Mikey Nichols will go up against Okada. Taguchi is going to face Tanahashi. Zack Sabre Jr. is going to face Kota Ibushi. Yano is going to face off against Colt Cabana. And Minoru Suzuki will face Sonata. So where do you want to start? Massa jumps off to me first. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Kota Ibushi. I mean, they had two awesome matches last year. I expect nothing less this year. So right, and I, with Zach Zach um being missed in the Japan Cup right now, not having ever lost, you're going to see. Yeah, we are a lot of it, there's a lot of intrigue about that match. Now I think it's safe to say that we can kind of ink in Okada and Tanahashi into the next round. Uh, oh, of course, come on now. So come on now, yeah, of course. So. <laughs> My man Taichi going up against Ishii. What do you think about this one? How do you think this is going to play out? Do do we reveal behind the curtain? Do we do the do the what's the Oz thing right here? Oh, that's right, because this match happened today as we were cool. I'm not going to give away the result. But go ahead. But I'm basically tell you, in my opinion, this is one of the best matches Taichi has ever had. As a singles wrestler, oh wow! Like, that I've seen. Can't wait to watch it. This myself. is def- this is this is definitely one of his best like matches of his heavyweight run for sure. So very high on that match. Like okay, go yes, like maybe shut once you busy finish doing what you're doing for the night. Just fire up New Japan World and just have fun with that because yeah, that was really good, man. All right. Uh, and, how about the quality of Yoshihashi and Chase Owens? You know what? That match was pretty good too, brother. So right. they gave us two pretty good, like strong matches, like for night five. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, man. Like you could watch those matches. Yeah. So that, like, and think about think about how I was kind of cold on Yoshihashi and and Tai Chi from their first round. Mm-hmm. Nah, I don't feel like that after this. All right, nice. And then uh, this is kind of a wild card. Lance Archer versus Will Ospreay. Don't think that, you know, young Will would have a chance, but he seemed to be flourishing against these giants since he's been the never open weight champion. This one, they might pull some slick shit on us and have Will lose and then make that like a, like, like a title defense. I don't know. They might do some. They, they don't want us to, like, be totally in the know. But it definitely has symbolism when Will was one of the people in that ring, like going back and like one of the, one of those last people. It was symbolism having all those people in the ring at the end of the anniversary show, and Will was one of them. So I feel like I feel Will got to keep going until it's him versus Okada, and then after that point, Will goes out. Okay. Comedy match supreme Yano versus Colt Cabana. Man, this shit gonna be fire. <laughs> if you love comedy like wrestling and foolishness, this gonna this gonna bring this. I I wonder if this is gonna top like the Omega and Yano matches of the last couple of years. <laughs> we gonna we gonna see. I, I got I, I, we gonna find out. This is gonna be interesting. 
yeah, that's gonna be that's one that's gonna probably have me laughing. And then Minoru Suzuki and Sonata. They had they've had pretty good matches in the past. They recently had a good match, so I expect this to be another good match. And if they're gonna do something with Sonata, he needs to win versus Suzuki. Just, just, I'm just saying. Well, hopefully Suzuki can pull out the A effort from Sonata that's in there, but doesn't always come to the surface. And we'll see. Yeah, we will. We will. So that is the review of the New Japan Cup and the 47th anniversary show. The New Japan Cup will conclude on March 24th, where there will be the finals. And then the winner will go on to face Jay White. Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania weekend, where our own Anwar Starwin will be in the building. So yep, I'm going to be there, and our future correspondent is going to be at the Dallas show. So we're going to be representing in both big shows. Right, right. Yeah. Look, looking forward to that later on this summer when mm-hmm. that, the G1 starts out in Dallas. So. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a special guest on for that to get that live oh. perspective on how that show went off. But until then, and in the meantime, in World Starwin, give me your shout outs and thank you, sir, for this episode of Cast a Strong Style. Um, I want to give a shout out to Madam Lizette. I want to give a shout out to Dewan on What Sleep Though. I want to give a shout out to Jupiter Julep because she always gives shots outs. And, um, Shout out to you for always including me and having we having fun on this New Japan podcast and props to everyone who takes the time to listen and, and give us feedback. You're appreciated. I'd like to give a shout out as well to the ladies of the uh Forever Um Young cast. Those lovely ladies made it so fun during the May Young Classic. Hopefully they do uh, that again this year and I can get back up with them to Talk some wrestling. I think we're gonna have something. Yeah, I think we're gonna have something special for uh, after WrestleMania. So be on the lookout. For Woo! That. I'm ready for that. Uh, also, subscribe to the CSPN Patreon page over on Patreon.com forward slash CSPN Media. Check out the Dark Match. You can hear me and Anwar talk about other types of wrestling or get in depth on some things that we don't cover here on the cast of strong style as well as you get to hear uh pre and post uh show conversations from the wrestle cast my co-host over there dd jonay mr magnum prime so please again become a patron support the cspn become a backstage pass member and you'll get to listen to our exclusive content only on patreon.com forward slash cspn media um that to give a shout out to Anwar joining me once again. Give a shout out to all the listeners of the Cast of Strong Style and the WrestleCast. Everybody who uses the hashtag Cast of Strong Style when they're watching uh, the matches on New Japan World. We greatly appreciate the interaction and uh, keep tweeting and interacting with us. We definitely have fun and we enjoy everybody's commentary with color. And so, with that being said, for my co host, Anwar Starwin, I'm Don DeLorente, and this has been Cast of Strong Style. Cast, cast of strong, strong style. style.